Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to talk about a book and a documentary which is about brain and I found it really interesting so I decided to talk about it. The book and the documentary are both provided by the same person, David Eagleman, which is a neuroscientist. I can say that both book and the documentary have the same content, but the book has more details which complements the documentary, but I personally like the documentary more than the book. So the documentary has six episodes and the book has six chapters. And in each chapter, David Eagleman comes up with a very fundamental question about our existence. For example, in the first chapter, he asks a very interesting question, who am I? Then he talks about the importance of first two years of our lives and how our brain gets formed in those years. There is a scenario about an orphanage in Romania in which all of the children were in the same condition. They had to wear the same clothes, they had to be in their cradles all day, they were eating the same food, they were getting the same haircut and they didn't get so much love from anyone because they didn't have parents and the nurses who were taking care of them didn't have time to spend for each of them. So they didn't have the opportunity to interact with one another, to experience different things, to touch things, to experience emotions. And because of that, they didn't learn the necessary skills that we need for the rest of our lives. And they were suffering from mental disorders till the end of their lives. So the childhood is very important from the viewpoint of neuroscience, especially the first two years. Then he talks about the rest of our lives and how our brains change during our lifetime. He has many, many different examples that is very interesting, so I recommend you to go and watch it. I don't want to spoil it. In the second chapter, he asks another interesting question. What is the reality? He explains how our brain perceives the world and he comes up with a very interesting case study of some prisoners that were prisoned in a very very dark place. They were in total darkness for a few days and at some point their brains started to generate some kind of reality. They started to see some kind of random pictures and hallucinations although they were in total darkness. Then he talks about time and how we relatively experience time based on our mental and physical condition. In the third chapter, the question is, who is in control? Apparently, neuroscientists believe that our brain is an autopilot mode most of the time. This means when we're drinking, when we're eating, when we're walking, when we're driving, we do not really think how to do things. We just do it unconsciously and automatically. So when I was reading this chapter, I was thinking that maybe we should not trust our brains that much because our unconsciousness affects our decision-making a lot. Then in the fourth chapter, he talks about the fact that how we decide things in our lives in more detail. Then he shows how researchers can change our decisions in a lab environment using a TMS device, which produces some kind of magnetic stimulation in our brain that changes our decisions. For example, we want to raise our right hand, but instead we raise our left hand. I should admit that it was kind of scary when I watched it because all of the people participating in those experiments were saying that no, we really decided to raise our right hand and then suddenly we changed our mind and we decided to raise our left hand. But that was not the case because researchers were saying that they were the ones who were changing that their decisions and the participants were saying that they didn't notice how they changed their mind. In the fifth chapter he shows how much we need to be in touch with one another, how much we need to interact and communicate and he talks about rejection and the effects of rejection on our minds. Apparently when we're experiencing rejection 
the same part in our brain gets activated that when we're experiencing pain gets activated. So if you're feeling a pain or you're feeling a rejection from a person or from a group, the same part of your brain gets activated. That was an interesting fact for me. In the final chapter, he talks about our future and he explains how will be the future of us, how technology is going to help us to be more powerful, how can technology help the disabled people, or how can it fix some of our mental problems or some of the problems in the wiring of our brain. All in all, I really enjoyed both the documentary and the book, but I can say that documentary would be enough. You don't need to necessarily read the book too. I summarized all of the chapters, but there are many interesting details that I didn't talk about. And if you watch the series or read the book, you will know more about them. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care.